I know you're gonna dig this. What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? I'm at a very special, special place. Now I'm in Bloomfield Township, Michigan, which is just north of Detroit. I'm one of those people when I'm in like the Detroit area, I call everything Detroit. But this is a different, different, you know, this is a township. It's not Detroit, but it's Detroit. Like I'm close enough. It's like being in LA, if I'm in Orange County, if I'm in Anaheim, if I'm in, uh, I don't know, even in Lancaster or somewhere up there. I said Los Angeles. It's all Los Angeles. But this is Detroit, Bloomfield Township, and this is the parking lot where Jimmy Hoffa disappeared. Right here. And that restaurant behind me, that used to be called the Matchett's Red Fox. It's now called Andiamo. And inside that restaurant is where he was supposed to meet two buddies to talk about him becoming the leader of the Teamsters once again. Well, they're not sure exactly what the meeting was about. There's so many different stories about what, what the meeting was about, why he was coming here. Do you know who Jimmy Hoffa was? Let me explain. See, I go into these videos assuming people know everything already about the topic, because maybe they're interested in it, but I know that maybe some of my viewers aren't, aren't aware, or it's been a long time. It's 1975 that he disappeared. Jimmy Hoffa was the leader of the Teamsters for a long time. So he revolutionized unions and, well, got mixed up with the mob. I'm glossing over a lot. I read so much on Jimmy Hoffa in the past three days, my mind almost exploded with Hoffa information. So I'm gonna be taking you to a few locations having to do with Jimmy Hoffa today. This is probably the biggest one. Now, he got involved with the mob and said that the Mafia ordered a hit on him. All, because of fraud, embezzlement, that sort of thing. And he wanted to become leader of the Teamsters again once he was ousted. And then it's also said that the Teamsters had him killed. It's probably one of those things that's never going to be solved. Now, you may know more about Jimmy Hoffa. You may want to add in, in the comments below. I always encourage that. Add in more to, more to the story if you like. Whatever you want to uh, tell me, we're gonna go to some places to do with Jimmy Hoffa. But first, I'm gonna take you inside the restaurant and show you inside and downstairs where the payphone was where he made the phone call to his wife saying he'd been stood up. Let's go in. So down these stairs are where the payphones used to be. Oh, this is really nice down here. And this is where he would have made the call to his wife to say that he'd been stood up. Now, a lot of people say that there was the hardware store behind here in the mall is where he actually made the phone call from. But I was just speaking to someone who worked here and they said, no, it was actually from here. There's so many discrepancies with the story of Jimmy Hoffa, obviously. You can never tell what's fact and what's fiction, but they said that the phone call was made from down here, wherever those payphones used to be. If you're ever out in uh, Bloomfield Township, Andiamo, gorgeous restaurant. So this is all original, like the building, nothing's changed except for the interior, obviously. But what I mean by that is this is the basement, this is the same setup. I was just talking to another person that works here. But they're not sure where the payphones were either. But yeah, it's a huge place. Perhaps he's somewhere in here. I don't think so. But these are the stairs Jimmy Hoffa would have come down to use that phone to call his wife and say he'd been stood up for his meeting. 
So how cool was that? That's pretty pretty cool that they let me do that. The people that work here at Andy Amo are amazing. The food looks amazing. It's gorgeous inside. Thank you very much. So here it is. This is the parking lot. Now they have valet service right out front here. But the lady that works here said that back in the day there wouldn't have been valet service, obviously. Not obviously, but there wasn't. So his power is parked somewhere around here. And then he drove off in someone else's car. Now he was seen in a trucker was the last spot with two other guys in a Mercury. But Jimmy Hoffa's car was left behind here. And right here, well, let me flip the camera around, is where that hardware store would have been. And they say in the hardware store outside, there was a telephone booth. And that's where he made the phone call from. But I've read that he actually made the phone call from inside. And that was just confirmed by someone who works here. But they're not, you know, they said, yeah, story goes, he made it here. And they've heard that it was there. It was most definitely there. You may have a different opinion. Nobody really knows. There's so much mystery surrounding the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa. But it's this parking lot right here. This is where he was last seen. So this plaza has actually been here for a long time. It's just been redesigned. I assumed that it was brand new, but said the lady working said, no, it's been here a long, long time. Probably since back in the day, but there was a hardware store right here. restaurant here one of the stories is that uh, uh, Tony Provenzano a mobster that he ordered the hit on Hoffa but his alibi was he was in Hob Hoboken New Jersey touring union officials around there but he admitted that he set up a, a meeting with Hoffa but that makes no sense why he would connect himself to a meeting with Hoffa if he was gonna have him killed does that make sense to you? No. And also, if, he was if Hoffa was supposed to meet two people, two men, at 2.30, why would they be late? Hit men aren't usually late. From what I gather, they're pretty punctual and they do the job. I'm just brainstorming, thinking about theories now that I've been reading about. Like, why would Hitman show up, make him wait around? Why would they pick him up? Take them and do what they're gonna do. Oh. Ha. Huh. I'm now going down the worm hole of Hoffa. There's another place not too far from here where they say that his he was taken and put into a trash compactor, another restaurant called Rally House, which is uh, about uh, three or four miles down uh, this road called uh, Telegraph Road. I'm gonna go down there, see the address, see what's there now. I don't think the restaurant's there anymore at all. But let's take a look, and then I'm gonna take you somewhere really cool. So this address was hard to find. I had to go on a lot of like historical Detroit websites. But apparently a restaurant used to stand here and it was called Rally House. And he was driven from the Red Fox restaurant, the former Red Fox where I just was, to here that was a mafia owned restaurant called Rally House. And after he was garroted, which is being strangled while he was in the front seat of the car, because I mean the back killed him, possibly shot, possibly stabbed there's many different theories about what happened to him if that happened to him in the car and brought here to the mafia owned restaurant where he was put in the trash compactor located out back and 
then hauled away by the sanitation department, which was mafia run at the time. Creepy stuff. But yeah, this location here, this is where that restaurant used to stand. And this is one of the places where they say Jimmy Hoffa met his end. But yeah, this is the building. Well, this is where the building stood. But that's the address. Hmm. I see no trap. Well, I see that, but looks a little small. Okay, no jokes. Try to keep it non-humorous. All right, now I'm gonna take you to another location where apparently Jimmy Hoffa met his end. And this is what the movie The Irishman, coming out soon, Mars Scorsese directed with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Hoo-ha! They are the stars. Al Pacino plays Hoffa, and Robert De Niro plays Frank Sheeran, who went to his grave saying he was the one that killed Hoffa. I'm gonna take you to that house right now. So another theory about Jimmy Hoffa is that at this house right down here, this is the house that he was taken to and murdered by Frank Sheeran. And the FBI has torn up the floorboards of this house. They found DNA, but it didn't match Hoffa. Some people say it did, and it's a cover-up. It's all very confusing. What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Let me show you the house. All right, now I'm gonna take you to a few other places to do with Jimmy Hoffa. Keep on going. And it's bizarre how close these places are. I didn't realize, like, I thought this house was gonna be really far from the restaurant. It's not, but it makes sense in terms of the Jimmy uh, Hoffa legend and the lore surrounding the story that the house would be close by. It's a short drive and take care of business. But yeah. Now I'm gonna take you somewhere else to do with Jimmy Hoffa. So in the shadow of the Motor City Casino, which is a great place in Detroit, by the way, look around me. Teamster's office right there. Teamster's office right there. And then behind me, Jimmy Hoffa's Teamster's office right there. Michigan Teamster's, home of James P. Hoffa. This building's been around a long time, obviously, and it's also a fallout shelter. Well, that's good to know. But take a look inside. There's a picture of Jimmy Hoffa. Ready? Look up there. Do you see that? That's Jimmy Hoffa right up there. So James P. Hoffa is a general president. That's his son. Jimmy Hoffa's son is still the president here. So yeah, isn't that something? His son, there's a president now, and Jimmy Hoffa used to work right out of this building. I'm telling you, come to Detroit, there's history, not just about Jimmy Hoffa, about everything. You can, you can get lost in this city and discover new things. Check out Detroit. I love this city. And now I'm gonna take you to one final place to do with Jimmy Hoffa. Really cool place that I really search hard to find. Why am I pointing at you? Because I want you to come along with me. All right. Ah, this is cool, this building. Jimmy Hoffa was in there. That's where he conducted his business. Then he got booted out. Then he tried to get back in. And then 
No more Jimmy Hoffa. Where is he? All right, so I'm gonna end it here, but right in front of me, this is Jimmy Hoffa's boyhood home. Now he had another, he had a lake house up on Lake Orion, which is north. And I was trying to find his house that he lived in when he, when he was uh, kidnapped and, well, murdered. But I'm not sure where that house is. I'm assuming somewhere up in Bloomfield. But this house right here, that's where he lived when he was 14. He was born in Indiana, then they moved here to Detroit. This is not far from his office. He was, when he was here, he started working at Kroger's. I believe he left school to go work at Kroger's. But that office I showed you for the Teamsters, really just about a five minute drive. But this is his boyhood home right here, Jimmy Hoffa. There it is. Jimmy Hoffa's boyhood home. Another theory I was reading is that he's actually buried in a shallow grave somewhere north, about 20 miles north of where he was taken from the restaurant. And I, the plans were to move his body uh, at a later date and they never did. Now they've dug up that field, they've dug up a barn up north, giant stadium is another rumor that he's buried uh, somewhere under one of the sections or under the, uh, one of the goal posts or in a certain section, I think it's section 170, something like that. Another theory is he was uh, chopped up, sent to Florida and dumped in a swamp where he was eaten by alligators. Another thing is that he was crushed up at a auto body uh, place, placed in, encased in metal, shipped off to Japan, and new cars were made out of him. I'm not making this up. This is what people say. So somebody's either made it up or this is rumors. The FBI has officially list, uh, listed him as dead, but it's an open investigation still to this day. What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Leave your comments below if you think you know, if you have a theory, if you have more theories to add. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. He checked my trunk, I don't know. Rest in peace, Jimmy Hoffa. You can, it's, he's a punchline now to a lot of jokes. It's kind of sad. It's somebody's life. And I've treated this uh, maybe a little lightly at times. But I know Johnny Carson was making jokes about it like a month after. It was a famous, famous case back in the 70s. But 1975, when he disappeared, it was a sad day for his wife. His wife is buried in Troy, Michigan, not too far from here. And uh, it said that she died of a broken heart. They were together for a long time. I believe since they were 18. Yeah. All right. So rest in peace, Jimmy Hoffa. Peace to you and yours. Hope you enjoyed this little trip through Detroit, showing some Jimmy Hoffa locations. Like I said, if you have anything to add, write down below. There's lots more. There's lots more to the story that I am not getting to. Peace out.